Welcome to InfoCanon. Today we're going to solve a very common issue known by we hackers as the brick. Now before this tutorial starts, I just want to say that this method is by no means universal, and it will not work for everyone. Now I would also like to point out that I am not responsible for any damage done to the internals of the Wii during this tutorial. However, so long as all the steps are followed exactly as they are, then there should be no problems. Alright, now before we get started, we have a bit of a shopping list that we'll need first. So first of all, of course, you will need an SD card. As the main communication bridge between us and the Wii, the SD card will hold all of the important files that will be used by the Wii during the unbreaking process. Now one quick note, however, is that you'll have a better chance of success if you use an SD card that is not high capacity. Now while no one really knows for sure why, high capacity cards have been known to give people errors in the past, so it's best if you just don't use them. Now as for me, I bought a 2-pack of 2GB PNY Premium SD cards from Walmart for under $15. They're cheap, effective, and they get the job done. Now the next thing on the list is a GameCube controller. Now the reason for this whole thing is that once we initiate the NAND formatter, the only way of controlling the Wii will be through the GameCube connections on top of the system. Now I unfortunately did not have one of these, so I went to my local GameStop and picked one up used for about $10. It's pretty cheap. Now last but not least, you will need a personal computer with at least 100 megabytes of free space. And that has access to the internet, of course. Now while this may seem obvious, it's always good to make sure that your PC is in good working order as it's the most vital component of this whole process. Now to get started, you'll need to download a few files from the Wii Hacks link that I'll be including in the description of this video. Once there, you will be presented with a guide that will relay all of the steps that I will show you in this tutorial. Now you can read the guide if you want, but it's not necessary. Next, you can navigate to the top of the page where it says click to show links to expose the download links for the NAND formatter. You will then see that there are two options for download with the only obvious difference being the region letter at the end of 4.1. Now there are currently only two options, 4.1U and 4.1E. U stands for USA, and E is for Europe. Now knowing this, you can then download the correct version of the file that is respective to your country or region. So as an example, I live in the USA, so I will thus download the 4.1U version. Now once the NAND formatter download is complete, scroll down a few inches and you'll see another link to where you can download a program called Setting Editor. Now unlike the NAND formatter, this application is universal, so it doesn't matter your region, so just go ahead and download it. Now after downloading the files, we are ready to prepare our SD card. Start by inserting the card into your computer, and opening up the root directory. Now if you are unfamiliar with the root of an SD card, I have a detailed explanation video on my channel. Link is down below. Now at this point, if you have any files or folders on your SD card that you do not want deleted, simply copy them to a separate place on your computer, such as your desktop, to protect them from what we will do next which will be to format the entire card. Formatting is fairly easy. Simply right click the directory on your SD card, and in the dialog menu that appears, you can click on format. From there you can ignore all the optional settings that are available and just press format. Of course, being sure to say yes when it prompts you. Alright, so now that our SD card is complete, let's crack open our downloads and see what we've got. Now one thing that you'll notice is the fact that these files are sealed in a compressed archive file. Now this isn't your average zipped windows folder however, as you will need a special archiving program to open it. Now lucky for us, it's free and I'll be including a link in the description of this video to where you can download it. Now first off, we're going to extract the setting editor to our desktop and take a look at that. Inside the folder, there lays another folder, and within that is the setting editor itself. It's a very small application, and there is no installation needed, so let's open it up and we'll see what we can do. Here you'll be presented with a handful of fields, a lot of which have to do with your region. However, I will go over each of them real fast as to clarify what you should and shouldn't enter. First off, in the area drop down menu, you must find your country abbreviation and select it. I live in the USA, so I will select USA. Now moving on to model, you will want to leave everything as default except for what is in the parentheses, which you will change to whatever you entered above for your area. Next up, we have DVD and MPCH. Now you're going to want to leave these as default, as these do not require any specific data in order for this to work. Next on the list, and probably the most ambiguous field of them all, is the CERNO section. CERNO, which stands for serial number, requires you to enter your Wii's serial number. Now while this is not a requirement, if left blank or full of zeros, you will not be able to successfully access the Wii Shop channel or any of its content. Now if you don't know where to find your serial number, it's usually located on a sticker underneath the console. 
Now the number itself can sometimes be a bit confusing, but it's pretty simple once you understand it. You will see two or three seemingly random letters, followed by a string of digits, and last but not least, a number encased in a small box. Now taking this data, we can enter the two letters into the small field on the left, and the string of numbers, including the enclosed digit, in the larger field on the right. Now onto the final two sections, which are game and video. Under video, there are three options, two of which are the only ones we will need to pay attention to, NTSC and PAL. Now if you live in the USA like I do, then you will choose NTSC. But if you live anywhere else, you're going to want to choose PAL. And then last but not least, in the game field, you will need to select your country or region once again. Alright, all of our region data is set in place, now the last step is to save it to our SD card. Now this step is extremely important, so make sure to pay attention. When it asks you to give it a file name, make sure you name it setting.txt in all lowercase. If this is not done correctly, the NAND formatter will not be able to read the file and will result in an error. Now once you've given it a file name, save it to the root directory of your SD card and we can move on to the NAND formatter. Now once again, extract the NAND formatter archive to the desktop and open up the directory until you see these three items. Now I'm going to include a list of all these files and folders that must be present in this folder in the description below. If a file or folder is out of place or missing, please let me know in the comments and I will provide a secondary download link. Now what we're going to do is highlight the two folders in the single file and copy and paste them into the root of the SD card. Now you should now see that the two folders in the single file have now joined the setting file on the SD card. At this point, there's nothing more that needs to be done on the computer. To properly and safely eject the card, right click on the SD card directory and select eject. This will ensure that all of the data is properly locked on the card to prevent possible file corruption in the future. And now with all these steps complete, it's time to move on to the Wii. Alright, now once you have access to your Wii, insert your SD card into your Wii's SD card slot and press the power button on the console. Now you will now discover that whether or not you installed Boot Me to your Wii, because if you did, you will be greeted with the Boot Me main menu. Now the way that we control this UI is a bit strange, as the buttons on the Wii console itself will be the way that we navigate through the set of menus. Now to be more direct, the power button allows you to scroll, and the reset will serve as select. Now this next step is not necessary, but it is highly recommended. We will be creating a Boot Me backup of our NAND, just in case something happens to go wrong in the restore process. Now while this is extremely unlikely, it's always good to be safe. Now to start, press the power button to navigate over to the cogwheels icon on the far right, and press reset to enter into the second set of menus. Now the one we are really interested in here is the icon that depicts an SD card and a green arrow. Now pressing reset on this option will start the NAND backup process which will take anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes. Now you'll know when it's complete by a solid block of green blocks and a message near the bottom that says it's verifying. Now I personally think that the verification step is not necessary, so press reset again to exit out of this menu. Now that our backup is complete, we are going to initiate the NAND formatter. Press power to navigate to the back arrow on the far right, which will return us to the main menu. From here, press power twice until the SD card is selected, and once again, press reset. From here, all the contents of your SD card will be visible, and you can scroll through the list using power on the Wii console. Now once you think you're ready, go ahead and press power until the NAND formatter is highlighted, and finally, press reset. You will then be presented with a black splash screen and white lettering giving you a final warning as to whether or not you want to quit. At this point, you can plug your GameCube controller into port 1 on top of your system. Now once this is connected, go ahead and press the A button to continue. Now next, the system will ask you if you wish to read the setting.txt file from the SD card or the Wii NAND. Now of course, since we created the proper file a few minutes ago, we will press B to read the file from our SD card. Now on the next screen, the formatter will display the serial number as to clarify that the data it is receiving is correct. From here, you can press A one last time, and the program will proceed to format your NAND and install all of the WAD files. And once completed, you will be warmly greeted by the default Nintendo splash screen, dating back to the point when you first set up your system. From here, you can resync your Wii Remote and set up your date and time information corresponding to your region. Now, once the setup is complete, you can press A at the Health and Safety screen, which will take you to the brand new system menu. Now, when you first boot it up, it's uh, it's pretty empty. All there is is the disk channel. Now, there's no need to panic here, however, as this is 100% according to plan. So all you need to do is update the Wii, and the rest of the default channels will be installed along with it. Now updating couldn't be easier. Simply insert a game that was released sometime after 2009, and the Wii will call for an update before you can play the game. 
Upon inserting the disk, the disk channel will turn into a Wii system update that all you have to do is open to get it started. Now if you receive an error, it is likely that you haven't connected your Wii to the internet. So if you haven't already, then go ahead and do so. Now once the update is complete, then you will be rewarded with all of the default Wii channels that come stock with the system. From here the Wii operates as normal and you can sync any of your Wii remotes that you currently have and play all of your games just as you did when you first purchased your Wii. Well that's it for this tutorial. If you like this video, then check out some of my others. Also, if this video helped you, please subscribe so I can bring you more content like this. Also, if you have any tutorial requests, please let me know down in the comments section and I may feature it on a future episode. My name is Andrew and until next time, thank you for watching.